All right, let's get to our top tens. This is going to be an exciting conversation for sure. Um, at number 10 for me personally, I have Elijah Vera Tucker, someone that I have pounded the table for throughout this entire process. I very begrudgingly moved him to into your offensive line just because you know I do think the length concerns will have most teams pegging him as an interior offensive lineman. But I do think that he could play tackle in a pinch. I just think, you know, great athlete, very aware player of his surroundings. I think he's incredibly smart, takes great angles. Uh, and I'm just a big fan of his as well. Um, Jamar Chase, the wide receiver from LSU, is my number nine player. There have been some talk from a certain network as he's the best receiver since Calvin Johnson. Uh Hard disagree there. I do think CeeDee Lamb would be ahead of him if they were in the same class, in my opinion. Um, but I do like Jamar Chase. Great ball skills, great physicality. He's only six feet tall, but I think the kind of way, like the physical and aggressive nature in which he runs routes, I just love it. He's got a lot of A.J. Brown in him in that regard, although A.J. Brown is, is a little more jacked up. Um, Tevin Jenkins, the offensive tackle from Oklahoma State at number eight. Love him. Someone that has skyrocketed up my personal board just because of the way that he plays. I know uh, certain people have, have kind of pegged him as someone that the Chargers would not take because he plays right tackle. But I do believe that he could play left tackle for any team and specifically the Chargers. I think he, the, the tenacity that he plays with, the way that he fires off the ball is going to translate to either side. Uh, and then Jay-Z Horn, the cornerback from South Carolina. My cornerback one is at number seven. You know, I've talked about him quite a bit, so I'm not going to highlight him too much here. And then Jeremiah Owusu koromoa the safety from Notre Dame. Uh, and if you have listened to our conversation or my conversation with Ben Fennell, you know that that's kind of a thing that a lot of people in the league do view him as a safety. And I just think the kind of speed, size, athleticism that he brings to the table, one of the best cover players, regardless of position, in this class. I think someone's going to take Jeremiah Owusu koromoa and move him around all over the field and get a great player. At number five, Rayshon Slater, the offensive tackle slash into your offensive lineman for Northwestern. I'm not too confident that the Chargers would actually take him if he were there, uh, just because I do think that their physical profile that they're looking for might not fit what Rayshon Slater is at 6'4 with 33 inch arms. But incredibly technically sound player, brings the most diverse package as a pass blocker, can win in all of the different techniques. Um, and you know, I think there is a very interesting conversation that he could play into your offensive line, maybe for the Giants. I think it is that is kind of where he starts to potentially fall off the board. Uh, maybe Carolina if Panay goes sooner. Um, but I think Rayshon Slater is going to be a fantastic player. And then I have the two quarterbacks, Justin Fields out of Ohio State at number four, Trevor Lawrence at number three. I think that's a very interesting conversation. I know people, including myself, have kind of pegged Trevor Lawrence is far and away the better quarterback, but I do think that Justin Fields is is very close to that. And then Kyle Pitts, the offensive weapon slash tight end from Florida at number two, and Panay Sewell, the offensive tackle out of Oregon, who to me is the best offensive tackle class that we've seen in the last 10, 15 years, uh, is my number one player. As Alex would say, that's very on brand for you. <laughs> it is very okay. cool, number one. <laughs> so let me see. That's one, two, three, four uh, to offensive linemen in the top ten. <laughs> That's right. Better believe it. <laughs> <laughs> well, a positional value obviously, you know, influences right. things there because yeah. you know Najee Harris and Elijah Vera Tucker had the same grade, but Najee Najee Harris is a running back, so he's the least valuable position. Yeah. He's at the least valuable position, so he's lower. Um, but yeah, four offensive linemen in my top 10. I love yeah. it. I love Jeremiah. Uh, Boromo. I mean, we all have him in the top uh, somewhere or oh, in the top 10. We haven't said it yet. And of course, there's only thing left. So of course, we have him in the top 10. But yeah. there are just few guys in this draft who are actual thumpers in the run game who bring the heat, who just yeah. have that extra something. And he's like one of the only guys who has it in this draft. Um, so yeah, I love him here as your best defender as, mm, let's see. Yeah, my highest graded defender as well. What he does at his job. He's fantastic. So I, whoever gets him, it's going to be a ball. Unless he goes to the Raiders, and then it's going to be terrible. <laughs> yeah, that's what, not going to be fun. What, what, um, you know, I know you've been on the Tevin Jenkins train for like the last month or so. What what boosted Tevin Jenkins' uh, stock for you? Well, I think, you know, the way that he dominates in the run game is like the first thing that everybody watches. But 
you know, he's an incredibly physical blocker as a pass blocker as well. You know, you watch his understanding of leverage uh, and the way that he is, you know, on balance and under control at all times, I think is, is what kind of has separated him for me. Um, you know, I, I look at the way that he finishes blocks and again, finishing blocks. If you've read kind of my profiles on all these guys, finishing blocks can mean a number of different things. Obviously it means getting players to the ground, but it also means keeping your feet pumping and, and, pe- and pushing people down the field. And I think you watch the most impressive block that I have seen on film this year is watching Tevin Jenkins block Joseph Osai 15 yards out of bounds. Like the way that Tevin Jenkins mauls people in the run game, I think really is, is going to translate well, which is, you know, Chris Sims talking about Tevin Jenkins, any work as a run blocker is just the worst assessment out of any. It's so, so bad. Um, But yeah, Tevin Jenkins, I'm a big fan of his. And then he went, he tested a lot better than I thought he would. And that's kind of mm-hmm. that kind of what boosted him up because up until his pro day, he was at like 15, 16. Um, and then that kind of athletic profile just kind of boosted him up. Yeah. I, I mean, he's kind of insane. Uh, going into <laughs> my top 10, uh, I have Trey Lance quarterback from North Dakota state at number 10. Uh, Jeremiah Wilson Kuromoa at uh, linebacker at number nine. Uh, Eight, Devonta Smith, wide receiver uh, from Alabama. I mean, pretty self-explanatory. I think he's the second best wide receiver in this class. We'll get to my first later. Um, Patrick Sertan, CB1, number seven. Not number 27, Stephen. Uh, He is number seven. Uh, Here, I just think he has the least question marks at the cornerback position, and I think he's day one, you know, plug-and-play guy. Uh, And I think, you know, obviously he hasn't shown a lack of athleticism either. Uh, which has been my biggest problems when people criticize him. Um, Justin Fields at number six, uh, you know, obviously very high. I uh, just, he's the clear QB two, in my opinion. I know the Jets are going to take Zach Wilson, um, but to me, they should seriously reconsider that and take Justin Fields. I think a lot of people are sleeping on him. Um, He does have some interesting, you know, uh, tendencies when pressure comes uh, and sort of can overreact sometimes. But to me, the skills that he has and the ability to coach that out of him to some degree. Um, I, I think that, you know, is, is why he's at number six. I think his flaws that he has are fixable. Um, and then obviously his natural skill is insane too. Uh, Rayshon Slater, offensive tackle at number five, Penny Sewell, offensive tackle at number four. Um, they weren't separated by a lot for me, um, kind of when it came down to it, but I still do have Penny Sewell uh, ahead of Rashawn Slater. I have Kyle Pitts, the offensive weapon, tight end, wide receiver, fullback, whatever you want to call him, uh, at number three. <laughs> I think he's just kind of an insane physical player, uh, and you know he's a great route runner too. And whatever team takes him uh, in that top ten, please don't be Dallas. Um, <laughs> is going to have a guy that for the next 10, 15 years is going to be a dominant. Uh, I have Jamar Chase at number two. Probably the biggest difference in the top 10 uh, when it looks at uh, looking at me and Steven and Tyler's. And of course, I do have Wonder Boy, uh, Trevor Lawrence, quarterback at number <laughs> one. Uh, I'm going to get a lot of shit in the comments because of my <laughs> Lawrence Herbert take video when we evaluated the quarterbacks. But I do think he is the clear uh, above uh, all you know, quarterback in this class. Uh, very few flaws to really point out in his game. And I think he's just going to be a great pick for Jacksonville. And I hate that because I hate Urban Meyer. Um, but uh, yeah, that's my top 10. I love your description right here of LSU. Odell handing out bands university. <laughs> yeah, that, that national championship game. You know, first of all, fuck the NCAA. Odell should be allowed to hand out whatever he wants to Jamar Chase or any of the 2019 national champions. But uh yeah no uh <laughs> and i also have urban meyer swamp for florida <laughs> but yeah. it's uh yeah no uh, i had i had a little fun with those and you know for for our patrons if you want to access the google sheet uh of our top 50 you can have fun with all the names i chose <laughs> absolutely tyler any thoughts on alex's top 10 here i love chase over i mean i disagree but i love chase over pits like i don't think i've seen a whole lot of that um, but I like it. Jamar Chase is a fantastic wide receiver. I just think Pitts is kind of, you, you can probably get Chase, every, maybe every a guy like Chase every few years. I don't think you can get a guy like Pitts every few years. Um, yeah. But no, I still like it. I mean, he's a great player. I only yeah, have I, I can totally, two I, below. 
Yeah, I could totally see that. Um, for me, you know, the whole like, you know, some, you know, Ian Rappaport posted some tweet that was like, some agent told me that it, he was actually the best wide receiver since Julio in the draft. And I was like, okay. But I was oh, actually God. curious. And I went through like the last eight, nine years of wide receivers. And I was trying to find like, who's the last guy that came out that was like Jamar Chase. Um, and the guy I landed on was in 2015, uh, Amari Cooper. Uh, he came out to the Raiders. Uh, and to me, Jamar Chase, to me, is kind of Amari Cooper 2.0 with how he physically runs routes, the speed that he has being somewhat comparable to Amari Cooper. Um, that's why I have him at two. And, you know, um, while I am happy that the Eagles traded out to 12 because I think it was the right thing to do, uh, potentially missing out on Jamar Chase will keep me up every night uh, probably for the next 15 years. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I just think, he, you know, for me, it's just such a slight difference with him and Pitts on my board. I know most people yeah. would put Pitts there, but to me to yeah. have like a true dominator type wide receiver one, I just value that a little bit more over a total offensive mm -hmm. weapon. Um, but, you know, uh, that's just my opinion on Jamar Chase. I know some people have him higher, some people have him lower, but that's, you know, and to me, as like I said with Amari Cooper, uh, I wouldn't go as far back as Julio, but I do think out of the last decade, he grades for me as, you know, one of the top three guys to come out. Wow. That's an interesting conversation for sure. I, I would love to go back and, and kind of compare because I loved CeeDee Lamb last year. I thought CeeDee Lamb, you know, what is I think he's going to be such an, an awesome player in the NFL. He landed in such a great situation uh, in Dallas. So that's going to be an interesting conversation to look back on. All right, Tyler, let's get to your top 10 here. Go for it. Alrighty, at number 10, I have JC Horn. I just think the mentality that he brings, like not just what he does on the field, but you know, everything I've heard about him, you know, wanting that alpha cornerback mentality and the way he plays, I just have to put him ahead. Even though I think maybe sort of like if you had 100 reps against the receiver, Sertan might be better year one. Like I think over time you want a guy like Horn. Uh, next, I have Demontis Smith, then Jeremiah Abustu Koromoa. Then Elijah Vera Tucker, a guy that I was lower on when I watched him on YouTube. Then I switched over to All-22. And then Steven <laughs> did a great breakdown. And it's like, oh, okay, I get it now. Um, I'm, I'm really happy to have him here, not because I'm a USC fan, but because I think he's really good. Although I do have him at interior offensive line, just because I think that is where he is. End up, he's going to end up being the best as a guard, um, yeah. which is not a slight to him. I just think he's so good as a guard that you know he's a guy to pound the table for. Uh, next is Rayshon Slater. I have him as a tackle. Whatever you want to do with him, fine. But I think as a tackle, he showed that he could handle the best. Um, and so he is my offensive tackle, too. Then Jamar Chase, the difference between Chase and Smith for me. I just like the way Jamar Chase. I mean, look, both of them are fantastic players. But Jamar Chase, I just like the physicality of how he plays, the mentality yeah. of how he plays. Maybe that's why I like, you know, Horn as well over Sertan. I just, there's something about that edge, you know, mentally that he has. Uh, the next is Justin Fields. He's in my, he's number four. Then Kyle Pitts at three, Pene Sewell at two, and then Trevor Lawrence at one. Um, you know, Lawrence at the end of the day gets the position value boost, and so he's my number one player. 